guys, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Bride, and I'm back with another Last Week in Vegan. Before I get into this week's stories, if you haven't gone and seen my collaboration with Plant Based News, I will link it in the cards and in the description box below. It's kind of like a version of Last Week in Vegan, so go check it out if you enjoy these videos and want to see my collaboration with another awesome vegan channel. The first story of the day is that Donald Trump's new government has removed any mention of LGBT or civil rights and global warming or climate change from the official White House website. As of Inauguration Day on Friday, January the 20th, dedicated pages and sections of the WhiteHouse.gov website that focus on LGBTQ plus rights, on global warming, and on things like healthcare have been removed. Now, people are pointing out that it is normal for the website to change when a new government comes in, but it's not normal for these important issues to be completely dropped from the website. It's normal for them to put up new pages about these issues from their own perspective in their own wording. So the fact that these pages are completely gone and there is no mention of any of these things is definitely a concern. Some of the pages and sections they've added as they've taken these other ones away are America's First Energy Plan, Standing Up for Our Law Enforcement Community, and Making Our Military Strong Again. What are your thoughts on Donald Trump's administration removing these important pages from the White House website on the very first day of his presidency? Let me know in the comments below. The second story of the day is that Universal has shut down A Dog's Purpose premiere. The film that was supposed to be premiering this weekend has been pulled by the production company after the release of a disturbing video that has made its way around social media. The video showed Hercules, who was a German Shepherd used in the film, reacting in a very stressed and aggravated way when forced to swim in a man-made rapid for the filming of the movie. The American Humane Association, which is the body responsible for the No Animals Were Harmed accreditation, had originally given the movie a pass on animal treatment, but as a Wednesday they have launched a new investigation into the practices that this film used in their filming in relation to the animal performers. PETA came out with a statement asking people who care about animals to boycott this film and asking production companies to focus on CGI for animals like what was used in Jungle Book rather than live animals that are forced to be in dangerous or uncomfortable situations. Yes honey? Hi. While I think it's great that they are shining a light on the animal abuse that happens in the film and TV industries, I completely agree with other vegans I have seen reacting to this saying, once again, as we did with Cecil the Lion and with Harambe, why do people care so much about this one dog and not about the six million animals that are killed every hour for food? The third story of the day is that as one of his final acts in office, Obama finalized an animal welfare reform law. Some of the practices banned by this law include tail docking, mule zine, and transportation of sick animals. This rule is focusing primarily on organic farms, which is an interesting move as the majority of the public views organic as the better option, more humane and healthier. Of course, that's not always the case. The rule doesn't just prohibit certain cruel actions, but also clarifies some previous requirements including mandatory access to the outdoors for egg-laying hens. While unfortunately these new rules don't apply to all types of animals, for example, pigs are still allowed to have their tails cut off at birth, and these rules are also focused, as I said, on the organic sector, on farms that wish to have organic certification. Hopefully the benefits of this move will be twofold. Firstly, that conditions in organic farms will get better for the animals. And secondly, that this will bring attention to the fact that organic farms really aren't humane to the general public. People who consider organic the shining gold star, the perfect and most ideal form of farming are potentially, in hearing this news, going to do their own research and look into the reality of organic farms today. The next story of the day is that farmers are feeding cows Skittles for cheap calories. Last week, residents of Dodge County, Wisconsin, found hundreds of thousands of the red candy strewn across the road. When police investigated it, they discovered that they came from a truck that was on its way to a cattle feedlot. A farmer in the area revealed that it's common practice to feed these animals rejected candy 
that aren't suitable for consumption by humans for whatever reason. This is seen as a cheap source of calories and carbs for the animals. This practice is seen as a way of increasing profits as it's cheap to feed them and it helps them to fatten up quickly. This in addition to the fact that cows are already eating incredibly unnatural diets just shows us how much the agriculture industry is focused on profit first and has no concern for the welfare of the animals under their protection. The next story of the day is that PETA has purchased shares in Louis Vuitton. The animal rights organization has become a shareholder in the luxury leather goods company in the hopes to gain decision making power. While they did not disclose the amount of money paid and the amount of shares purchased, they did make it very clear that the amount purchased was enough to give them a voice at meetings and allow them to put pressure on the company to end its sale of crocodile skins. I find it interesting that they are speaking about exotic skins only and not focusing on the fact that Louis Vuitton sells far more leather than they do exotic animal skins. It's the same with pretty much any other luxury brand and even non-luxury brands. The amount of leather that's produced from cows causes far more cows to die than the amount of luxury products made with crocodile skin, for example, that causes crocodiles to die. The demand for crocodile skin products is far lower, in part because of how much more expensive it is. But leather? That's where we need this advocacy. PETA can definitely be problematic, and while I've talked about them in positive light in the past, I don't really understand this move that they've taken and hope that with their power to speak at meetings, they will advocate for the reduction of all cruel products from Louis Vuitton, not just those of exotic animals that people care more about. The last story of the day is kind of a fun one, and that is that eating hot red chili peppers apparently prolongs life. Now teen evidence is showing that this plant has life-preserving powers in its ability to protect against obesity, cardiovascular disease, and more. This information is based on a study that was conducted at the University of Vermont College of Medicine. Researchers found a 12% difference in mortality rate between those who regularly ate spicy peppers and those who did not. Those who didn't had a 34% mortality rate over the 19 year period of the study, whereas those who ate the spicy peppers had only a 22% mortality rate. Other than preventing cardiovascular disease like heart attacks and strokes, the consumption of these hot peppers seem to also help with other illnesses that involve the lungs and the metabolism. So basically, eat hotter food. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode of Last Week in Vegan. Please respond with your thoughts, comments, questions in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys and have a conversation about all of these stories. Don't forget to go and check out that video collab I did with Plant Based News. I also highly recommend that you check out my latest installment of the Self Care Saturday series. I talked this week about activist burnout and activist fatigue and ways to prevent and recover from it if you are experiencing symptoms of this problem. I think this is so important for activists in general, but especially with the Women's March on Saturday, seeing millions of men and women and children come out to support this cause, I realized that this was such a prime time to talk about activist fatigue because not only are those who are constantly protesting and advocating for their causes going to be protesting in the next four years, but people who have never ventured into this activist space. And it's so important to take care of yourself as an activist if you want to be an effective one. So check out that video and see the 10 tips I shared there. Like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. And check me out on social media at Elizabeth Turn on Instagram and Twitter. Bye guys.